everybody. Hello everybody. So today we are reviewing The Flash Season 5, Episode 14, called Cause and Excess. So for this one, Cisco has finally able to put the final piece and everything to the uh, metahuman care, but it would take 30 days for it to be complete. But if Barry was to take it into the Speed 4, it, was, it would f fix it and then within an hour they can use it. Yes. So Barry has to go into the Speed Force. So he does go into the Speed Force for an hour and during that time uh, Cicada comes after Iris and um, Nora tries to save Iris and end up being killed or being killed and then you know it just kept repeating and she's we get to see her ability she runs an hour she's able to reverse time for an hour at least well, almost an hour yeah and so um and so she constantly for this episode she constantly travels like an hour to try to like come up with the way to beat Cicada and not have anybody killed because if she does end up saving like Iris, someone else's die. Even if she puts everything together, it ends up being Cecile and all these things yeah. like that. So she pretty much does that and then she ends up having to tell the team, the crew about it and they have to come up with a plan to beat out Cicada for this so that nobody dies. Yes. So. Yeah, with Barry going in there, she's a little bit worried, and she tells Barry that, like, you know, what if, like, something happens and, you know, the Flash is needed? Well, he said, you know, I'm pretty sure you can do well. You know, don't worry, I'll be back in an hour. And so everybody kind of splits once Barry goes into the Speed 4. Iris goes back to her office. Um, Caitlin, and Cicada, uh, Caitlin and Sherlock ends up working on a device together. Cisco is about to go on his date and Ralph is going to help him go on his date and that is when Cicada comes to Iris' office and kidnaps her and Nora and Killer Frost comes to save them because you know Killer Frost is kind of like immune to uh, Cicada's, Cicada's um, dagger and but in the meantime like you know the dagger goes spinning around like a boomerang and Nora ducks and it stabs Caitlyn instead so she runs back in time and it repeats but it's it's Cisco it's and then Cisco. it's Ralph and then it's Iris and then it's Cecile over and over and over for 52 times yeah nonstop. Yeah, so, you know, she doesn't understand why, and she's, like, panicking, and she's, like, writing in her book, trying to find out scenarios and how to do it. And so, every time she does this, Cisco is able to vibe. Like, like the touch he's, the things, the papers he touches, he can see what, what already happened. And so, he's kind of, like, confused, like, okay, this and this happened, you know, on his date of what he said, or what the girl said, and all these stuff like that. And so they eventually figured out that she was, you know, doing something. And they consulted her about it, and she's like, yes, you know, this is what happens, and I'm only able to rewind time an hour, and I can't go any further than that. And they're like, how many times it happened? She's like, 52. So for the 53rd time, they will work together this time to fix it. And so she, they're pretty much like, you know, write to, write for us of what happened in all the scenario. And so she's like writing it. And like Sherlock is like paying attention to what she's writing. And he's all like, okay, you know. They devise a plan in which they would have to slow down Nora's ability to rewind time. By doing that, it will create, it will create their own version of the flash time. Because Nora isn't good enough to go into flash time, then she all she knows how to do is run forward and run backwards. She she can't. She doesn't know how to control it. So she's never actually um, trained herself to be able to control how much time she wants to rewind. All she does is the moment she gets she she feels like there's danger and she needs to do something that she just runs extremely fast in the opposite direction and it rewinds the time. And then she just goes back and redoes her thing. So she doesn't know how to control it. So the way that they kind of bypassed it was Cisco was uh, Sherlock, um, Cisco, and them. They devised a way for her to be able to run forward 
but the moment the dagger is about to strike whoever it is, they throw her in. They throw her through the a, a uh, time a breach. They throw her through a breach that that Cisco creates, and that in turn makes her go the opposite direction. And then when she runs the opposite direction, it freezes time momentarily enough to where she can uh, rewind them coming rewind them coming onto the scene grabbing them uh, gra grabbing them getting them out of the way and then going back forward and the dagger will completely miss them and only hit cicada so it's a little it's a little complex little thing especially the way that they kind of showed it it was a little complex the way it worked but it, um, ultimately that was like the gist of it was they just needed to slow her down to re to reverse her backwards through and then through a breach and then to create another breach for her to come out forward to re reflow the time and she they they did they did that su successfully Cicada gets stabbed by his own dagger and it hurts him but you know it's it's his power it's his weapon so it's not going to kill him so he leaves everybody is happy um, Nora is happy. Then Barry comes back from the Speed Force, but as you guys know, he's done time traveling quite a quite a bunch. He when he came back, he immediately knew something was up. He immediately knew that that something had happened while he was gone, and he gets the answer from Nora that she ran back. She reversed time. 52, 52 times. times and Barry kind of gave her the he gave her the lecture that Jay Garrett gave Barry when mm -hmm. Jay when uh, season three flashpoint yeah when when Barry met with Jay Garrick about doing the the time traveling change and the thing is Barry doesn't know yet that Nora has the ability to rewind time but what he tells Nora you know essentially is you're is a, as a speedster you're not supposed to abuse that ability any speedster can rewind time, but you're not supposed to abuse it because at some point, um, every small difference you make in each timeline, it adds up and then it, it breaks the timeline, which will create a whole new timeline. And sh what Nora doesn't understand, which she wasn't told by Eubard, is that even this timeline that she is in is not the original timeline. It's a different timeline in which Eubard himself created to make it as similar to the original one with a little bit of changes of what of things for himself so even Nora doesn't know that and Barry knows that now uh, Barry has a really he comes back out with the serum completely fixed so we know that the serum is good yeah we know that the, the, the Medicure serum is good but if you, if we kind of dive into like the changes, the subtle changes of what Nora created, was they kind of showed it when uh, when Cisco went into went to the date, and the people, the guy ordering, because Nora saved them, the guy ordering the drink at the beginning is different. Mm -hmm. Not only that, um, the wait the waitresses react different to mm -hmm. Cisco and even the girl reacts different to Cisco showing up so yeah Cisco was like yeah I know what's gonna happen but that doesn't but that only happened because he because he was affected by the change so um, you can they kind of already start to show that like what Nora did even though she could rewind time you can't you can't change outcomes you're not supposed to change outcomes and when you change outcomes it changes everything yeah yeah and then we get because of um, them having Nora explain to them what she did and how she did it and what she wrote down recorded yes. in her book Sherlock was able to take what she wrote and was able to pretty much uh, what's the word he was able to solve the rest solve of the book. the rest of the book because he took a picture of his <clears> book and he's been trying to solve it. And with her being able to write down what he needed to know and explaining to him yeah. what it meant, he was able to pretty much 
get everything with the book and it's in the process of translating everything. Yes. And then we also get Nora time traveling back to 2049 to tell Eborn, like, Yard. asking Ebar, whatever, Ebor, yeah. about, like, you know, like, are they really going to stop Cicada, you know, yeah. stop her dad from dying. And he's like, I don't have time. I just need you to get that dagger. Yeah. Well, so, he's also like, I'm the only one who knows what, yeah. I'm the only speedster who knows what he's doing. Yeah. So... Obviously, you guys, you all know Eobard has traveled just about every universe, just about every timeline he could possibly do, just so he could beat the Flash. He obviously understands that Cicada, um, that Cicada's dagger, it's a meta tech, so it's, it can be used for different things. And not just negating powers. And I'm sure Cicada doesn't understand that. I'm sure Cicada doesn't get that what Cicada can actually do with it is absorb dark matter and use it. But he right now, he's just negating it. So, um, you know, this still pits that Eobard hasn't changed. And Nora is just a fool for believing him that he's changed. Because he hasn't. He hasn't changed at all. Yeah. Yeah, so that leads, uh, that's the, leaves us with episode 14 and then gets us ready for episode 15. Yes. And so for episode 15, we get King Shark versus Gorilla Grodd. So yes. So they are back for episode 15. Yep. So these two guys were big baddies in the previous season of The Flash. Um, and they, they had somewhat big slash not so big roles because King Shark wasn't too big but Grodd had like a big big thing to do with the Flash um, season what five season one he was introduced we're in season five I mean, right now. season four right <laughs> the Savitar season no yeah. season three season three we yeah were, he had a really big yeah. role in season he three he was introduced to us in season one and then season two he took Caitlyn and Caitlyn realized that she's the only one who can talk to him and then in season three they were they went and fought like Gorilla Grog King Grog whatever yeah. and then now he's back yeah so yeah. Uh, you guys remember Gorilla Grog has the ability of psychic powers without a mind um, protection thing he pretty much takes over you he has the ability to control your mind and manipulate you to do things that he wants you to do so you know him he's kind of like a big like weakness to Barry because Barry can't outrun it there's no way Barry can outrun that so whenever Barry fights him Barry always has to wear the little headpiece yeah. so that Grodd can't control him um, King Shark's always kind of just been like a big buff dude, so Barry's always kind of handled King Shark pretty yeah, pretty easily. He's, he's with Argrit, Arg Argus. Yeah, so it's but whatever the case is, this episode's gonna be a, a battle, and Barry's kind of gonna be stuck in the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that is it for the review for season five, episode fourteen, and we will see you guys for episode fifteen next week. Yep. All right. All right. See you guys.